it's me, Bloodstained Wings. So you guys saw in one of my previous videos that I was experimenting with stylized forests and I was having a lot of fun with it. So I decided that it would be fun to try starting from a completely black background um, and try to do something a little more fantasy-esque. In one of my first videos, you guys actually saw me do a forest that had a sea creature floating around in it. It was a jellyfish, and I thought, you know, that was a lot of fun too. So why don't we combine these two ideas into one epic painting? I present to you my stylized woodland with a fish just, you know, swimming out there in amongst the trees. Uh, and without further delay, you guys can watch me paint. If you would like to join in along, I recommend first of all starting with a black canvas and uh, second of all having some of the shapes for the trees cut out ahead of time. You will also need a palette knife, my personal favorite, and also a few select colors. We're going to be using Viridian Hue for the background color, Titanium White for the white that you obviously see here, uh, and then a mixture of Cadmium Red and Alizarin Crimson for basically the fish. Uh, so if you guys are ready, let's jump right into it. Hello, okay, let's, let's start this. So you guys saw in the intro that this looks awesome. Um, I have yet to see it. So, you know, let's just jump right into it. Uh, so first of all, I'm gonna start with uh, Viridin Hue, which is a very nice emeraldy green kind of green. You can see here on the, on the paper. Now I've already done the, uh, the goop on this, so there is already goop on the canvas. Uh, I just thought I would pre-start with that. Save ourselves some headache. Um, you know, uh, this is also a painting on top of another painting, so there's already some weird texture going on in the painting. Um, you may notice that, that's okay. We're gonna go with it, we're gonna roll with it. Uh, I didn't like the painting that was underneath, so I'm painting over top of it, which is one of the things that you can do. If you don't like your painting and you're like, no, I am embarrassed by this, even if somebody else likes it, you just don't and it's not up to your standards, paint over it, no big deal. Don't waste the uh, paper <laughs> or the canvas, depending on how you're painting. But absolutely, just, uh, just go for it. Just keep going with all the things that you can do. You may notice I am leaving a gap here and you may notice a little bit of some drawing over there. I plan on doing something a little interesting with this. Um, and you can see we have, well, I mean, you guys saw the whole thing, but. So basically walking you through my process, I cut out a vague shape of what I want the like tree line to be. Um, and I'm gonna start with a little bit of white mixed in with that Veridin hue. And we're just gonna like dab it across the top and we're gonna keep this part particularly darker than the other one, but that's okay. Just cause I want the other one to stand out more. So we're just gonna use whatever's on my brush to go across this entire thing. As opposed to here, we'll probably dapple a little more white to make things cool. But here we go, pulling straight down to make some lovely forest-like shapes. That looks really good. I think I'm just going to grab a little bit more of it to have like another layer. That's like, you know, like here. Just to kind of keep that shape going and to give it like a little more interest so we can have like a tree branch that like disappears and comes back out kind of thing. I like that a lot um, when paintings do that. I'm also going to have to go back and blend it underneath here again, but that's fine. Same with this one. Just going to be have to blend it again. That's fine. Um, so now I'm going to do the inner tree. And then we can release everything, which is going to be great. I'm going to go across the top there like that. And then grabbing a little bit more. 
I'm gonna like make another line through here like that and another one right there that's gonna give us like lots of multi layers actually I'm gonna do one more right across here okay and then pulling straight down this tree should hopefully stand out a lot more than the other trees in the background. There we go. Just need a little extra. Now, obviously, it is still going to get darker at the bottom than it is at the top, just because that's the way trees roll. I don't know if you guys know, but that's how trees roll. So there we go. Now we can release this guy. have a fancy cutout of a tree. Now obviously there's some pretty harsh lines there and we don't want those harsh lines so we're going to come in and just pull down some extra over here and then I'm going to grab a little bit more goop and a little bit more of the green and I'm just going to come in here and darken some of that up so that it's not so much of a harsh line where one thing ends and one thing is clearly not the same thing. All right, that looks a little less of a harsh line, which is what we like to see. Now, we get to start drawing the like tree branches and tree things and making them all tree-like. The last thing we're gonna do is, is our fish here, but that's okay. Let's start with, okay, I gotta, I gotta make some decisions and I'm scared of all of these decisions. <laughs> so first of all, okay, before we get into the line art, let's get uh, some lovely palette knife action happening. Um, because I think what I want to do is have a little bit of some palette knife texture. Yes, I do. On uh, the tops of these trees. I should have kept that sticker there so I could do it on this one too. Can I get the sticker back? Can I place it in the same spot? Can we fix this problem? Who knows? Uh huh. So far, so good. It's not sticking the best because, you know, there's things on the canvas now, but it's working. It's working enough that I think if I hold it down, I can at least do the uh, texture on top to give it a nice little. extra bit of sass. Just just like the littlest bit of extra sass going on. There we go. Now we can pull it off again. Ah! It kind of worked. I think what I'll do is I'll come in with my small palette knife and just apply some of those details again there so it looks more it looks more tree like with the droopy things starting in the right spot and stopping in the right spot. There we go. That, that looks like a snow covered tree, which is exactly what I was going for. So that's good. We're going for a nice happy winter scene here with a little bit of a fantasy element. Just, just a smidge of fantasy. There we go. Don't 
this guy out. There we go. And then this needs to be cleaned up around the edge because it needs to actually come down from the edge of the tree. That makes much more sense. There we go. Don't mind the noises in the background. I have a cat who is trying to get into the garbage. <laughs> that's, that's, just, that's just fact. That's just life. I just do. All right, there he is. I don't know if you guys heard that. His little <laughs> It existed, it happened. There we go. There, nice little. And again, if you're using the palette knife to do palette knife art, like I do, uh, and you're, you're having trouble with things, the secret is to barely touch the canvas. Just like really, really, really delicate with this. Um, because essentially, you want the little roll of paint that you have on the end of your palette knife, which you can't even see on this one. That's how small it is. Um, you want only that part to touch the canvas. That's how little of this you want to actually touch the canvas. So you want to be super, super gentle. It's all about being the most gentle that you can possibly be. And if you're thinking you're being gentle and it's not working, you're not being gentle enough. Think of it like a, like a butterfly, you know, because like the oils of your hand are enough to weigh a butterfly down so that it cannot fly, you know? So like, that's how gentle you want to be. Like as if a butterfly landed on you and you're like, oh my God, don't touch it. If I touch it, I will kill it. That's, that's what we're looking for. Super, super light and delicate. I'm just gonna take the bigger palette knife because I find I get a little bit more yeah, free-floating things happening with the larger palette knife. There we go. All right, now that I have that, I also want to have a nice spot of land that everything is on top of back here. So back here, there's a little bit of land. That, let's get it like way up here. So we'll do that. Coming in across here and coming up like that. That, that looks really good. So just come in and lay that snow right in there. Just laying in some snow. That's the idea here. And that's in the background. And then I'm going to very gently pull it straight down. The idea behind pulling it straight down is that you get these really nice reflections for the snow. And then pull straight across and that will kind of blend everything out and make it look like a little pond or a river. I'm going for river, so just uh, just agree with me that it's a river. <laughs> uh, so I'm just gonna add some land here. And that's also snow-covered land. And this you don't have to be as delicate with because you're not really looking to add texture as much as you're looking to add the actual like paint. So you're just trying to add the paint to the canvas right now to apply snow, which done. 
<laughs> and now we have this like magical reflecting pond and then we have the magical reflecting sky. Let's open that sky up. Oh, that's satisfying. It's always satisfying when it comes off in one nice pull. So now that we have all of that, now we can get into a little bit of some goop mixed with our white and we can start drawing some background trees that are like super super narrow and just existing and we want them to be well i want them to be kind of fantasy looking so i'm gonna draw them relatively cartoony if that makes sense to anyone in chat in chat in the comment section, you know, that part. There we go. So they're relatively cartoony looking. I'm just gonna have it like break there as if there's something there. That it's like coming off of, you know? And just have it down like that. And like that, this is going to come out of this one, and do a little that, and a little this. This one's also going to come out of there, like that. The idea is to make it kind of, um, fantasy-esque. So that's why there's uh, things coming out like that, because they like split off from the same tree that would then come down to here. You see, and now that tree has this coming off of it like that. And you can do this. And it looks like this goes up to here, and then this goes up to there. At least that's the idea. And if they're wiggly, well, that's okay. We like wiggles here because in the end, they're still trees. Even if they're fantasy trees, they're still trees. So wiggles can still happen, which uh, is the best ever because uh, I, I do a lot of wiggles. My hand's not very sturdy. So, you know. You do what you gotta do. And and you play with the art styles that match the, your personality and your skill levels. Watch this stuff. There's a big chunk of white paint on that. I don't want that. So we're just going to keep adding little tree branches and uh, tree limbs to this whole painting, adding them wherever we see fit. That is the beauty of painting, is that you can just add whatever you want. And because it's your world, it just is. And it's fine. I'm just going to keep adding tree branches and, and tree limbs. This is not overly exciting. Um, if you want to, you can skip ahead. Uh, that's cool. <laughs> I understand that. But if you want to watch me do some relaxing tree branch painting, feel free.
There's not a lot of sound effects except the, the, the fact that the heat is on. It is winter here in Canada where I am. It is winter. Uh, and it's not like, you know, like, oh, no, you know, it's winter. No, 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 it's winter. <laughs> I don't know if you guys know the difference between those two statements, but, uh, you know, like, it's, it's real winter here. And, uh, that's a thing that we deal with here on a regular basis. It is winter. Very, very winter. I think I'm gonna add a few little bushes. That are just gonna be like my classic style bushes around the bottom of that. And maybe some over here as well. I think it still works because it adds a lot of like interest and texture. You know what I forgot to do? The big trees trunk. I should do that too. Let's get that going. So this guy's got a trunk right there. Coming in right here. And right there. Did that need to be musical? Not even slightly. When you do it, does it have to be musical? Absolutely. <laughs> it's not the same if you don't do it musically. That's that. And right, I'm gonna grab a little bit of the green just to add a shadow underneath this tree. There we go. Shadow. So now we have a lovely tree, the lovely forest, and everything is all like green and nice and Nothing at all is out of place. So this is the perfect time to make things out of place, right? The perfect time. So I'm just gonna clean my liner brush here. And then um, I'm going to go into a small brush, just a small little brush. And I'm gonna use the red as my base color. And then I'm gonna add highlights with white. I might grab some yellow, uh, I'm not sure. This is cadmium red, in case anybody wants to know what red I am using. This is cadmium red. Um, I find that it not only stands up against the um, black, um, so it's not see-through, um, which alizarin crimson is very much more see-through against the black background. Um, I find that uh, this one stands up to it. And also, it's like slightly more orange colored. And that orange color, I think, is going to help a lot have this like, I don't know, contrast with the green. Because as much as the red and green is very Christmassy, uh, orange and green is like, I don't know, complementary. I guess is is the different words that I'm trying to use. Okay, there's its two like under ones, and then it's got the like big one coming through like that. And then we'll come and put that in with a with a palette knife. Because if you thought I was done with the palette knife, you were wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you are 100% you wrong. Um, all right, so let's get a little bit of white on our liner brush. And I'm just going to give like a little highlight like that. I'm going to blend that out, particularly on the nose area and the back. But I just wanted to give it like a little bit of a highlight in that area and also like define the shape of the eye a little bit more. So the eye was more shaped. And you could see it bulging out. That's the idea is that it bulges out.
think I am going to grab a little bit of the alizarin crimson and just darken up the undergill area. Is that the words for it? And you know, I didn't take fish anatomy. That's not a thing that I took. Any, uh, any fish anatomy people uh, want to tell me what part of the fish this is? I think this is like the undergill. That's what I'm going with. I'm going with the name undergill. This is supposed to be like a goldfish. In case anybody is missing what kind of fish this is, it's a goldfish. Or maybe some kind of, it was supposed to be a goldfish. Maybe it's a beta fish. You know, <laughs> things happen. Things turn out sometimes to be things that you don't expect them to be. And sometimes they end up being beta fish when you're like, I want a goldfish. There we go. Creepy eyeball. It's everything you wanted it to be. Boop. Grab a little highlight there. There we go. All right. Now, oh, sorry. Sorry about that. Didn't mean to hit the camera. Now, we're going to grab our palette knife. Because, of course, we are. I'm not going to use the big one. I'm going to use the little one. Use a little palette knife, and I'm going to come in and give really dramatic... I was going to say wings. Uh, that's not correct at all. Fins. They're fins. Yeah, they're wings. It's fine. <laughs> it's wings! Um... There they are. And I think to like simulate scales, I'll do a little bit under here as well. Just to like give it texture, make it like match with the rest of the painting as well. Cause there's so much palette knife work going on here. Having no palette knife on this guy or just having it on the uh, other parts is like kind of weird. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some more texture to this guy. Maybe it's a gal. I don't know. I didn't, I didn't ask. Potentially, I should have asked before I painted it. <laughs> Arguably, before I painted it would have been a good time to ask. But, um, you know. We don't always roll like that with fish and uh, other creatures. Birds are much easier because in like nine times out of ten, if it's really, really bright and has a lot of co like color and stuff, you're like, oh, that's a male one. But like fish and frogs and... Those, uh, those kind of things, they can like be both and like neither and uh, nature is actually just, it's fascinating. Nature is fascinating. If you ever get a chance to like randomly study nature, it's, uh, it's fascinating and it's highly worth uh, studying because it just, it'll just blow your mind. Like hydras, that's a thing. That's a real thing. It's a real category of real things with like siphonophores and things in it. I bet you're thinking, what the heck is a sun, sun, oh my god, I can't even say it again, that's fine. What the heck is that? Feel free to look it up. Siphonophore, I believe is how it's pronounced. <laughs> now that I've had a second to, to calm down. There we go. I'm just gonna highlight the ground. A little bit. I use a little bit of the alizarin crimson. I'm gonna mix that in. A little bit of the the cadmium red. I'm gonna mix them both in just to give a little more definition to the 
ones that are not the tail. What are those called? Dunno. The underfins? Underfins! They're called that now. Just make up names for things. That makes me a real scientist. <laughs> Sometimes the names that scientists give to things, you're like, couldn't you have just named it after yourself? Wouldn't that have been better? And they're like, no, no, no. If you look at it like this, you're like, please stop. <laughs> Why? Why did you name it that? Now everyone has to call it that for reals. And they're like, yeah, yeah. And you're like, this is not good. And they're so proud of themselves. Look up weird science names and you'll see, you'll see what I'm talking about. There we go. Oh, lovely. Lovely fish action. We come back in here. Define this guy's fins over here a little bit more. There we go. Fins! Floating fish! That's a thing that happened. Now, because it's never enough, we gotta make it snowing. Obviously, it's winter. And look at all the snow that's happening. So, I'm gonna get my fan brush. I'm gonna dip it in the white. And dip it in some paint thinner. This is not goop, this is paint thinner. This will not work with the goop, you have to get actual paint thinner. You get it to like a real inky consistency in which it will just run off your page. Uh, that's the idea. You basically want it drippy, but not too drippy or else it'll be too thin, because it is paint thinner, so you still want it to be kind of thick, but still mostly thin. And we're just going to splatter the whole thing so it looks like it's snowing. And that makes our fish feel like part of the entire painting, even though it is literally just floating on top of it. There is a little bit of a orange shadow underneath, down here. There we go. I think I am going to make that white um, part of the river there come out more. I just want more land mass here. There we go. That's better. All right. And there we have a completed painting. I took a painting I didn't like, painted it black, and then I painted this on top. A stylized fantasy forest, fish included. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this painting. I certainly did. Uh, this painting will be up for sale in my Etsy shop, as usual. If you guys would like it, you can feel free to obtain it. And uh, thank you guys so much for watching. As always, thank you to my Patreons, whose names are scrolling by. You guys can join my Patreon and get a painting every single month, depending on the tier that you pick. It could be even this size. And I will do my best to paint your dreams and make them reality. Uh, please remember that you are loved and you deserve to be loved. And I'll catch you guys next week. Mwah!